Hey everyone, welcome back to our Getting Started series. My name is Brandon, I'm the head of customer education, otherwise known as the talking head of customer education. Today, we're gonna to talk about demystifying process automation. Let's dive in. All right, so let's talk about a well-known example for automation that almost everybody uses, and that example is light. So back in the day, if you needed to light your home, what did you have to do? You had to get some candles, some wax. Maybe you needed to go buy a wax or a lantern. You needed to have enough in your home. And then when it got dark, you needed to set up all of your lanterns, light all of the candles, use the light for X amount of time. If the wax was gone, you needed to replace the wax and then blow it out when it was done. So this would be a great example of no automation. This is what a lot of MSP businesses have right now where there's a lot of manual processes, but nothing is automated. So the next step in the maturity model is task automation. Now, I don't know exactly how this worked in an earlier society where there was no electricity, but I'm gonna take a guess and say task automation might be something like there is a wax merchant that comes through and you have them deliver candles to you. So this is automating a specific task. One part of that process is automated. It helps speed things up a little bit, but we're not quite there yet. So next we need to get to step three, human assisted process automation. So with the advent of electricity, you have the light switch. There are light switches all over your home. Now, obviously this is a huge step forward for automating the process. Process. You walk in, you flip the switch, and that's it. So this is a big step forward from task automation to process automation. It's still human assisted. I might need to walk around my home, turn on the light switch, turn on the lights outside, but it is a major step forward and saves me a lot of time. All right, and finally, the most mature model here would be autonomous process automation. So maybe you have sensors or timers outside. So when you hit a certain time of day, those lights turn on automatically. You don't even need to worry about it. You have the lighting you need. It all just happens. So this brings us to why we automate at all. We automate so that we can save time and we can focus on the things that matter. So for your business, these manual processes can take hours compounded on weeks and months and years and can take time away from the things that actually matter. So automation helps us to save time, improve service delivery. But another point we often emphasize here is that it helps us to reduce errors. All right, so let me go back to maybe a crude version of the example of the fire. But if you light a candle, and the candle drops, it might set your house on fire. Or if you were one of those very intelligent uh, individuals who used to put candles on a pine tree for Christmas, you might light the tree up and the house with it. You can apply this to your business as well, right? Unfortunately, there are major catastrophic errors that can happen if you do something wrong in a process. If it's automated properly and you are doing the correct error handling, you can reduce the amount of errors and hopefully remove these catastrophic events altogether. So saving time and reducing errors is huge with automation. You can also improve decision making. Of course, you have more time to focus on what matters. And of course, because of this, you can have a more enjoyable work experience. Maybe it's a little more boring. I don't know. Maybe you like fires, but for the most part, people are going to be more happy. One of the things that automation doesn't do is require the reduction of headcount. Automation is just like any tool, just like the light switch. It gives you the ability to focus on what matters. Finally, for this video, we wanna talk about the principle of automating a process that actually exists. You cannot automate a process that doesn't exist. Whether that's documented processes in your company or writing it down on a napkin, you need to identify what the input and the output is for that process. You need to identify what air handling needs to be there so that you can actually reduce those errors and what you can do from there is you can take small pieces of this process at a time and you can start moving forward in that maturity model but to start you need to write down your processes so let me ask you what processes do you want to automate with roost do you have those written down if not go back think about it with your team write down some of those processes and then come back and we'll continue moving forward all right, everyone, I hope that was helpful for you. That's going to do it for this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to identify which processes you should choose to automate and some best practices for getting started. We'll see you in the next one.